been a street in Bristol, Nelson Street, which is pretty much one of the ugliest streets in the UK, but with the biggest buildings in it. So the kind of idea was to just take it and just paint vertically instead of horizontally. So we're kind of going up the walls, along the walls, into the walls. And most events are all flat walls, so for this it was like the perfect canvas to do it. This street used to be the most depressing place you'd walk down. It's like everyone's like, you know, being really grumpy, but now look at it. Bristol is a beautiful city, actually. The architecture is amazing, and I think that the contrast between, you know, modern street art and this old architecture is so great, you know, it's so interesting. To be in a place that there's so many different writers and so many different artists, you know, everyone's always trying to raise the bar, which is dope, because that actually elevates your wanting to do better. If I was eight years old, to be, came down here on Saturday with my dad, I'd have been inspired, it would have blown me away. And I think it's blown a lot of people away, even whether you're eight or whether you're 58. At the end of the day, you know, it's an event that brings the masses together in order to create an explosion of, of art which always rejuvenates an area and it's allowing us to kind of do what we love doing. Bristol is renowned internationally for its acceptance and promotion of Graffiti Art Show Era Solar, and I think it's something that the city should rejoice in and be proud of. What's happening here in Bristol reflects what's going on in the global art scene in the way that we're kind of taking whole areas now. Rather than just doing one wall and it's stuck in the middle of nowhere, you're taking a whole area and it's almost like street dressing it. So taking like concrete drab buildings and making it into something colourful and beautiful, but using the architecture and the environment rather than just having one wall with one picture on it. Just talk to me, go on, go on, nobody talk to me. Just talk to me, go on, go on, nobody talk to me. The grimiest shittiest part of Bristol, you know, is finally kind of um, getting some attention and, and it's, yeah, it, it's down to the, you know, the graffiti artists, street artists to uh, kind of rejuvenate it and bring it back to life. Just talk to me, go on, go on, nobody talk to me. See No Evil brings to Bristol a positive image of how creative the artists from this city can be, but also it shows the links forged with the artists of this city and artists worldwide. It's really good to have a place where all these people come together and you know meet up and, and talk and have a beer and, and, and exchange styles and stories and stuff. It just helps to sort of stir it all up in the pot, you know, and, and inspire people and make it different and, and unique. What is this? center of Bristol, somewhere in the middle, and it's like a six-story building. I'm about two-thirds done. I'm basing this on a, uh, a photograph that I took of my, my girlfriend and her, her baby niece. It's almost kind of a Madonna image, I guess, you know, very iconic, you know, mother with child. I'm wearing a moustache, and I'm a girl, a woman, too, because most women who paint, especially in the graffiti world, they paint women, and most of them paint women that look sexy and half naked. And I paint big, fat, hairy dudes. I've created this character called the Vandal. He goes around painting the cities, covering them in his palette, an elaboration on the term painting the town red. Just seeing how wide the, the bowler hat was, that, that was ridiculous. It's just like, oh, when are we ever going to finish this? And then Bio from Tats Crew jumped in right, right on the last night. We just 
both work like a couple of digital printers. Just kind of... <laughs> We started out doing everything illegally. We were basically free to paint and do whatever we wanted. We were younger, we learned from the older guys, and now that we're older, we're learning from the younger guys. You know, and that's the beauty of art. You know, you, you never stop learning, you never start developing new ideas. So for us, we come here, and it's refreshing as well. See new styles, different mediums being used, different techniques, so we learn. Art is really rising up here. I think it's definitely a place that's definitely going to be like one number one tourist attraction here for, for the art. It's become a worldwide phenomenon, and, and especially with the internet, you know, everybody's sending pictures all over the world. So if you get fame in one place, you know, it's not really that difficult as it used to be to get you know, recognition uh, in other parts of the world. Sounds defract, defract. Because of the art is so international, everyone's photos will go around the world and they'll look through the whole set and they'll see new art and maybe, you know, some people can just get picked up. On an international level, uh, Bristol's got such a significant street art scene, mainly, I think, because of the history. <laughs> Probably the first city in the UK outside of London to have graffiti. Had the whole scene with 3D and Nick Walker, etc. early on. And then in 85, a uh, tax crew who were painting here on the street, they came over. I remember coming here because of 3D and his crew, the Wild Bunch and stuff like that. And to be honest, the, the only thing I remember about going to some party. We were hanging out there and we saw 3D perform and stuff like that. And, uh, and, to, and everybody says, you guys painted somewhere. And I don't even remember painting. <laughs> That means so. we had a good time. And it went through to a second generation of artists with the Barton Hill lot. All of the prolific artists from Bristol painted Barton Youth Club. My job as a youth worker, as an outreach worker, was to go out, reach those young people, bring them into Barton Youth Club, and show them that there was a legal place that they could paint, and somewhere where they could express themselves legally and safely, without fear of being arrested and prosecuted. We were really hitting Bristol quite hard, all the buses, all the train, everything was being done, and there was tags everywhere throughout the city. The tags on the graffiti on the streets, by the most prolific illegal writers in Bristol, matched those on Barton Youth Club. So the police formed a link between myself, the artist, and illegal work. The police, um, kind of like dawn raids in Bristol and Bath, with search warrants, basically looking for um, materials related to illegal graffiti, whether it be paint, marker pens, anything related to the art. I'm gone to Australia for a year. I heard from my parents that the house had got raided and they were like looking through everything with a fine tooth comb and, and an Inky had been arrested and you know and a handful of you know guys from writers from Barton Hill and my have you know, you know it was it was like oh that's serious. They even actually were looking for a dog, which was John Nation's dog, called Lenny, because we were all putting Lenny up on the pieces and they were like, who's Lenny? And so everyone got interrogated, they were like, who's Lenny, who's Lenny? Tell me who Lenny is. No, they should have just said, um, Lenny's not, not in the country anymore. You know, just carried it right on. And from that, I think about, it ended up about 40 of us went into court. I was the last of the artists to get caught. When I got back, I had to kind of face the music. So when I did touch, Touchdown, you know, I met up with a couple of friends and the first thing they did was give me a card of the solicitor that they'd all seen. And that did, you know, that was, oh yeah, 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 welcome home, you know. I got taken to Magistrates Court when I was, I was 18, I think, and I had about a quarter of a million pounds damage charges. And I ended up front page of the Evening Post with accused Tom Bingle walking out of that court. 
now, 30 years on, the irony is not lost that See No Evil is actually taking place right in the heart of Bristol. Buildings have been transformed and painted, but including the magistrates' courts and the juvenile courts, where a lot of the offenders in the original arrests and raids on the illegal art in Bristol were prosecuted and brought before the courts. And I think the irony is sweet. It's great, you know, that you can sort of go from that point, that sort of criminalised aspect to, to all of a sudden it's, it's for everybody, it's kind of like, it's art, you know. I think there's no holding that back, it's, you can't really stop the train once it starts, you know. There's a changing of the guard that's happening, which people that are in positions to employ art or okay where it should be placed are now the 30-year-olds and the 40-year-olds who grew up watching this art form and they're the ones who have more of an open mind toward it. There were some pieces across the city and so we thought we would ask the public did they want it removed or did they want to keep it and there was huge support for keeping it. So after that we started to look at it far more as an art form. We've had exhibitions here. I think it's become part of the character of Bristol. People look to Britain for inspiration in fashion, in music, in arts, in everything. Bristol's always been on the forefront of, you know, music and art and creative medium in general. It's just great to sort of have this amazing artwork with a brilliant musical backdrop as well. Street art has just taken on a whole new life. I mean, I would say within the past 10 years, it's, you know, sort of like blown up. And it's, I guess, cool to be a street artist now, you know. Street art, I guess, is very popular right now. I guess you could say it's kind of a trend. And, you know, I think the public has become very interested in it. It's kind of captured the, the attention of people. Graffiti's just become worldwide now at this point. It's something that just spread and spread, and it's on every square inch of the planet at the moment. I don't know if it's gonna last, and I hope it will, because what's happening now in Bristol is good for us, because it gives us the chance to show that we are talented, that we can paint some stuff that are different from what people think graffiti is, and that's, that's such a great opportunity, you know? I, I wish there, there could be more events like that, actually. <laughs> I think it's great that it's got a lot more public acceptance. You know, I think it's about time that it did. Uh, there's a, a real sort of old school mentality maybe amongst some that it's, it shouldn't be like this. It should be, you know, very much an underground thing and, and exclusively underground. I just see it all as art at the end of the day. I just see it under that umbrella, it's art. I think everyone benefits from something like this. Even us as artists being invited get to benefit from it, you know, experience different city, meet different people, uh, get to meet some of the other artists who we probably wouldn't c connect with. But overall, it's only going to help to, you know, enrich the culture here. We have a very young population in Bristol, and I think this is very attractive to them, and I think it will stimulate creativity in young people. I see the parents bringing their kids around. You know, like, you know, for us, it's an honor, like, you know, we have these kids coming with books and they know our history. There's no reason why this, this event can't happen again, why it can't happen somewhere else. I mean, it, the future's looking pretty good. For me, graffiti has pretty much opened up the world. I mean, it's enabled us to travel the world, meet new people. Uh, we've made a career out of it. I don't think we would have been as happy doing something else. I'm blessed to be able to kind of like uh, do what I do because I wouldn't want to be doing anything else.
But with this event, you know, embracing the future and the future of this art form and, and bringing in so much international talent, it's all going to just put Bristol on the map even more. <laughs> Thank you.